Okay, so like I said at the last of the end video, last video, um, I'm just going to go through and add the forearm twist to the opposite side. So we're just repeating what we did over here. So if you feel comfortable that you can repeat it yourself, you can uh, go ahead and do that and just skip this video. Or if you're quite new, I'd su suggest watching this video just going through it step by step so you know we've got the same rig going on. So first thing I'm just going to reset this side so keeping things clean hide the local rotative axes just so it's not clearing up the scene again and we'll move over here so what we did was select the IK check it's got the translate point constraint pole vector constraint the IKFK blend set up to a set driven key so just making a mental note of what we've got in there I suggest writing it down if you were going to be rigging and then going to another day and then rigging again it might be a good idea to note these down so you could remember from day to day but if you're just doing it in like a 10 minute job you might as well just try to remember it in your head and also if we're doing it from left to right you could always go back and check the other side so I'll just delete the IK unparent the wrist by hitting shift P Um, display the grid and I'll just create a joint anyway on the grid just X grid snap it and enter to create that uh, selecting the two joints and then the last the new joint we made constraint point make sure maintain offset is off so it snaps it to the midpoint of those two and then in the outline I'm just going to expand that joint and just delete the constraint so we don't need that anymore. And I'll just select the forearm on the other side, copy the name, and just paste it over here. And replace that left for a right. So now we can re-make re this joint chain. So select the wrist, select the forearm, hit P to parent. Select the forearm, select the elbow, P to parent. And again, if you remember, the rotation of this isn't going to be aligned perfectly. It, well, it's aligned with the grid still. So we'll go to Skeleton, Orient Joint, reset the settings, or choose the settings you used to orientate these joints earlier. And I'll just uncheck Orient Childs have selected so it doesn't affect the arm, the hand even. Just hit Apply. And it's aligned that. And it's always good just to check. So I'm going to put the local rotative axes of these just to check. Now we can actually see here it's the wrong direction. And if you can remember from previous tutorials, this is because we went to component mode, selected the question mark, which is like miscellaneous items. We selected that pivot and we rotated. So with Mel, we rotated it. So um, in the bottom left hand corner make sure it's switched to Mel so if it's Python we we'll just click it to go to Mel and just type rotate space dash R for relative so it's just going to add what we're going to put in and we rotated it so it was 108 degrees so dash relative 180 in X Zero zero. And we can see it's actually it's actually um, the Z is facing forward now, which we want, but the Y is not. The Y is pointing down still. So if we bring up the attribute editor, you can actually see in the joint orient, which is what we're editing with that miscellaneous selection. We can see because we mirrored these joints over with the or the mirror joint tool, but we created this and just snapped it up. So if we go to the orient joint you can see that there's actually a negative 180 in this joint orient for the Z axis. So we could put a value of zero on here but we'd see the whole arm flip over. So just before we do that, we'll select the uh, hand again hit shift P just to unparent it 
so we can set this to zero and it's looking like it's the right direction and we can just see if we can see it by eye reparent this back up and we can see the axes it's aligned rotating that we're not getting the arm to break it's staying parallel so that's all working so if we ever get any joints that are the orientations off we can always go to component mode select it and rotate it or use mail to rotate to specific values or we can always select the joint bring up the attribute editor and in here we can actually see the values of the joints orient so this is how it's going to be oriented we always want to make sure that there's no values in the rotate so we want to have clean rotations so it doesn't matter if there's rotations in the joint orient we just don't want any values in the rotate so now that's set up what we can do is we locked the Y and Z so we don't want to rotate in them so we lock it and then we set up the IK again so we go to um, JRig I've lost my shelf there for a minute um, bring up the IK tool make sure that it's the RP so I'm just bringing up the tool setting so it's the RP solver so we're using the same solver we used before click the start of the arm and click the forearm so remember we're doing it to the forearm on this and we don't want to press insert and move the pivot as it is now remember we have to go to windows render editors, hypershade graph the inputs and outputs and make sure we're moving the effector so we're not moving the IK handle we're moving the effector which you can't really select inside Maya inside the viewport but getting through the hypershade we can select it there so press insert vert snap it to the wrist press insert to come out of pivot mode and there we go so now we can set up the IK again so we'll just reconnect it back up so I'm going to select the um, wrist control shift select the IK control constraint point I'll just click maintain offset on I'm just, just so it's kept on and then the pull vector control select the IK constraint pull vector and again bringing up the hypershade um, we want the control and the IK and graph them both move them to the side remember we're looking for that graph because the IKFK blend was set up with that set driven key so I'll have to remove these graph remove selected from graph so what we want to do is set the output so I'm going to right click on the bottom right hand corner output left click on the top left hand corner the IK handle go to IK blend so now if we select that IK again just remembering from earlier we've got the point constraint we've got the pole vector and we've got that IKFK blend set up again so everything's working there um, now what I'll do uh, I'll just clear the gra graph clear graph and what I want to do here is we want to set up that arm twist again so I'm going to select the wrist control select the forearm joint just go graph add selected to graph click this top left icon here to bring up the creation menu and just go mole mel mul for multiply divide node and again drag and drop onto that go to other and we will take the rotate to the input one drag and drop onto the joint go to other and take the output x into the rotate x hit close and then we'll just check over here we had the attribute forearm twist with a default of 0 0.5 so we'll do the same over here edit add attribute and it was all capitalized was that forearm but remember 
um, what you type in here isn't always going to display in the channel box the same way, so it's not going to be case sensitive because what we actually did was we did it in lowercase, so for arm um, underscore twist. Set a minimum of 0, maximum of 1, default of 0 0.5. Add, so you can see here it's all lowercase for capital A for arm um, underscore twist. Click add. You can see it's automatically spaced that out and capitalized things. So to put a capital F for for, put a space between the capital A and then it's capitalized twist. So we just need to remember that this is how it looks in the channel box but this long name here we can use that in Mel with the same lowercase letters. And we'll drag and drop the curve onto the multiply divide node again, go to other and oops. So it looks like it hasn't done it correctly. It's taken the multiply divide on the multiply divide. So if ever this happens we can just select the curve, go reload left, which changes that to what we've got selected. I'll scroll down here to the forearm twist and put that into the input 2x. So if we can remember now that this forearm twist attribute, so if we twist this just to test it. So it's blending smoothly. And now we've got this forearm twist that we can and just double checking, we can see there's no orient constraint on here. So you can see actually it changes this forearm twist. It's telling this this wrist joint to rotate as well, so they're both rotating the same amount. And that's basically because this is parented to that, it's always going to follow the rotation of this. But because we haven't got an orient constraint in here, there's nothing telling this how to rotate. So if we just reset this back to zero, set this back to 0.5 and we'll set up the orient constraint, so we'll select the wrist control shift select the joint, go to constraint, orient make sure maintain offsets on, hit apply so now if we rotate this we can see it's m forcing that joint to match that rotation of the wrist and we're getting that half rotation in the forearm and twisting that value there we can see we're getting that nice twist distribution that we can edit. So set that back to 0.5, set back to 0, close the hypershade, probably um, we'll hide these controls, uh, hide the local rotative, rotative axes again so it's not clogging up the scene, and then I'll just collapse my character node, just want to check if there's anything we've missed, and here we can see the IKs, because we recreated them, they haven't got the names again, so just re rename these IK RP underscore left underscore arm or one and do the same for the right hand side, right arm, and then we'll reparent these to their IK, IK group in the character node, so everything's just cleaned up as we go along. And one last thing we'll, we'll do is we'll just move this IK and just double check that it can switch between IK and FK. Just so we know that we've set that up correctly. So it's always a good idea just to double check it. And again, this forearm joint is snapping, as we explained earlier, but we'll be using the mail script later on, or it'll be in the link of the previous video's description. So we'll be using that to make that smooth IK and FK blend. So we're just doing this just to check that we've got those two systems still working. So I'll just reset that to zero and we'll move on to the next lesson.